Hey guys, how you doing today? I want to talk to you guys today about how to fight temptation and sin. We are in a war. You know, I want you guys to know that. That we are in a spiritual battle. The Bible says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood because we are actually in a spiritual war. So we gotta have the mindset of a soldier. We gotta have the mindset of a warrior. A man at war cannot entangle himself with the affairs of this life. I'm gonna put the Bible verses in um in the below the video. So a man at war cannot entangle himself with the affairs of this life. You guys have to stop seeing things from a natural perspective. See everything from a spiritual pers uh, perspective. You are waging a war against sin. You are waging a war against temptation. You have three enemies. You have your flesh, your sinful flesh that wants to disobey the Lord. And you have the world that doesn't care for God's law. And you have the devil that wants to, that wants to destroy you. He's your real enemy, but you have three enemies that you're fighting. You're fighting against your sinful flesh that wants to go back to the old ways of, of disobeying God. You're fighting against this world system that's set up by the devil. The Bible says he's the God of this world. And you're fighting against the devil himself that wants you to spend eternity with him in the lake of fire. If you go to the Bible, if you guys open your Bible, you go to the um, First Corinthians, um, chapter ten. Um, this yeah, I'm gonna start from chapter ten, and I'm gonna go down to um, I'm gonna read from chapter ten, from one to verse uh, twelve, well, to verse fourteen. It says, "Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware." that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptized into Moses, in the cloud, and in the sea, all ate the same spiritual food, all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. But with most of them, God was not well pleased, for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Because God was not pleased with them, their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things became our examples to the extent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Because they lusted after evil things, their bodies were scattered in the wilderness, okay? That's what happens when you sin against God, when you, when you refuse His commitments. God scattered the body in the wilderness. Because they disobey Him, they lusted after evil things. Do not become idolaters as were some of them, as it is written. So not only they lusted after evil things, they also were idolaters. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose to play. Now let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And one day 20, 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents. Because of lack of self-control, disobe disobedience to God, sexual immorality, and one day, 23,000 of them died. You see how serious God takes sin and rebellion? And because they tempt Christ, some of them were also tempted and no let us tempt Christ. So if we tempt Christ, some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents. No complaint, as some of them also as some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. The destroyer is an angel that God used to judge mankind. The book of Revelation talks about the destroyer. In the last days, God is going to literally open the pit of hell 
uh, uh, release a destroyer and he's going to torment and torture the world for five months. So that's why God did, I think this is in the Old Testament, God um, released a destroyer because the Israelites kept complaining and, you know, they were destroyed. Now, all these things happened to them as examples. And they were written for um, uh, admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stand take heed, lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken, except such as is coming to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to I speak as to wise men, just for yourself what I say. Okay? So God will always create a way uh, for you um, out of temptation. Alright? Temptation is lead to sin. And, and sin lead to sin when it's fully grown leads to death. So one way to to not be tempted is to always pray. That's very important. The more you weep to the spirit, the more you get closer to the Lord, right? If you weep to the flesh, that weep corruption. Okay? I would put the Bible, like I said before, I'll put the Bible verses in the in, in the um below the video so you guys could read up on it. So if you rip to the flesh, it's going to rip to corruption. If you rip to the spirit, it's going to rip to life. The more you rip, you read your Bible, you stay in prayer, you spend a lot. I read my Bible twice a day. Sometimes I pray twice, sometimes I pray three times a day. Okay? And I'm listening to worship music throughout the day, most of the time. Right? So it's harder for me to be tempted because I'm in the presence of the Lord. I'm, 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 my house is a house of prayer. Right? So I know that when the enemy put evil thoughts in my head, I know how to rebuke him. Right? I have the strength to resist him because I am filling my spirit with God's word. And I'm staying in fellowship with the Lord. So I'm, the more you spend time in prayer, the more you spend time in worship music, reading your Bible, the, the stronger you get spiritually. If you spend most of your time um, listening to secular music, watching secular programming, and not cultivating a close relationship with the Lord, then it's going to be easier for you to fall into temptation. Right? So the devil wants to distract you. He wants you to, you know, spend less time reading your Bible. He, you know, he wants you to discourage you from reading your Bible because he knows there's power in God's word. There's power in fellowship of God. The Christian, uh, uh, I'll tell you, a strong, powerful Christian is a Christian who spends time in prayer. That's a, a Christian that have a prayer life. A Christian that doesn't have a prayer life, it's like having a um, having a machine gun, you don't know how to use it, right? That's a, that's a Christian that doesn't have a prayer life. They don't know the power that they have in Christ, in Jesus' name. They like, like people don't know that, they use the Lord's name, so cavalier, nonchalant, like it's not a big deal because they don't know the power in the Lord's name. As a believer, somebody like myself, who's a mature spiritually, I don't even use the Lord's name like that. Because I know there's power in His name. You hear how people use the Lord's name. They don't have any, you could tell there's no reverence. They don't revere His name. Because they don't revere His name, there's no power in it for them. Right? Because they don't, they don't, they're not obedient to God. They don't reveal his name because if they reveal his name, they won't even use his name like that. Like me, I always put Lord 
Jesus. I always put King in front of his name out of reverence, out of out of respect for him. Because I know he's not, I cannot use God's name just like I'm using somebody else, just an average person, right? I had an out-of-body experience where I was being attacked by a demonic spirit. When I yelled the Lord's name, the Lord, the demonic spirit flee, right? Because I know the power, they flee because they know the kind of relationship that I have with the Lord. You cannot use his name like that. This is God we're talking about. So because they don't fear his name, that's what happened to them. So temptation leads to sin. Because think about it. God is everywhere. The Bible says his eyes is everywhere, keeping watch on the just and the wicked. If God's keeping eyes on the righteous and the unrighteous, so he sees everything that you do. He knows your heart. People like to say that. He knows my heart. Yeah, well, I mean, how's that a good thing? He knows your heart. He knows if you really try to um, seek him, too. He knows if you're really sincere, you know? They always say that, like, like they deceive themselves and say, oh, God knows my heart. Like, that's, that's not necessarily a good thing. He knows your heart. He knows that you're not faithful. He knows you're not seeking the truth. All right? So it's a scary thing to say he knows your heart. Yeah, he knows everything about everyone. His eyes is everywhere. He knows your thoughts before you even formulated your thoughts. Right? He, he, he knows what you're about to think before you even think about it. So saying that he knows your heart, so you got to be careful by saying that and trying to, you got to fear God. Most, like this world that we live in, people don't revere the Lord. People don't revere because people are so blinded by the devil. They don't revere God. They don't revere his, his judgment. They don't, they don't have a fear for him. They don't have, they don't revere him. And so because of that, the Bible says the enemy blind their eyes. The the devil blind their eyes. Spiritually, they are blind. Okay? So because people are spiritually blind, they fall into sin. They are easily tempted. You can avoid some of the traps of the enemy by staying in prayer. Okay? Um, this guy said that um, prayer is like a repellent against demons. Uh, worship music is like a repellent against demons. Yeah, because worship music has power. And when you glorify in God, it repel the enemy or the demonic spirits away. And then you guys don't have the strength to rebuke Satan. If the enemy gives you your negative thoughts, if you don't have the, you, you, sometimes like this week, the enemy said to me that I am blaspheming against God because I'm worshiping Jesus as God. Because I know the scripture, I know my relationship with the Lord, I'm able to rebuke him. But if I was a spiritually immature Christian, I would start having doubt. I would start thinking, is Jesus God? Am I blaspheming against God by worshiping Jesus as God? Because I have a solid foundation in the faith, I'm able to rebuke Satan, right? I'm able to, I know, I know discernment, I know, you know what I'm saying? Like I have the Spirit, the Holy Spirit in me because of my time cultivating a close, close relationship with God, with the Lord Jesus Christ, you know? I mean, everything that you guys do. If you want to get close to God, you got to stay in the Word. You got to read your Bible. You got to pray. You got to um, stop spending time on things that doesn't have eternal values. So that's, that's, that's how you draw closer. And that's the only way you guys will be able to fight temptation. If you don't do that, you won't be able to do that. You'll be able to fight temptation. 
so for example let's say you are um you like looking at pornography right and obviously looking at pornography is a sin right it's lust you are lusting after somebody that you're not married to so you are looking at pornography just remember god is looking at you looking at pornography right because the bible says god's eyes is everywhere so if you have a reverence for God, you're going to be like, oh, I can't look at that. Just like you didn't look at pornography in front, of, in front of your mother, in front of you or somebody that you love or respect, right? You never look at pornography in front of your mother, in front of your father. Then why is it okay to look at it in front of God, the creator, who is better than your father, who create your father? You know what I'm saying? So I want you guys to have that mindset. Have the mindset that everything you do, God is God sees it. He's watching you. All right? It's kind of like, imagine having a camera wherever you go. The camera doesn't break. It's impossible to break. And it's everywhere. Everything that you do, God is there. He sees it. He knows it. What's the point of sinning against a God who's this powerful? You know? He's too powerful because he's too. I'm I'm talking to you guys right now. He's watching me. He's hearing what I'm saying. He's there with me. That's too much power to sin against a God who's that powerful. You're just deceiving yourself when you sin. When you do something, you think God like. I mean, if you don't care for God, I I get it. But if you're a Christian. You should like you should be very careful about your action, what you say. The Bible says you gotta control the words that come out of your mouth, what you see, what you hear. You gotta control everything. The Holy Spirit will, will will help you, but you gotta submit to the Lord. The Holy Spirit will teach you self control. Okay, do not deceive yourself. God cannot be mocked. He knows His true followers. And he knows the, the, the fake Christians. He knows those who are really love him, those who really want to change. You know, he's not expecting you to be perfect overnight, but he wants you to take steps to change. You got to understand, guys. He knows you from the beginning to the end. He created you. He knows your insecurities. He knows your hurts. He knows everything about you. He knows if you really want to seek him. Right? And if he trying, he see, okay, so let's say you are struggling with pornography. And the Lord sees you praying, you're trying to change, you look, you're still looking at pornography, you're praying. Eventually, he will set you free. Because he knows that you want to change. Your spirit is crying out to him. Right? Your spirit is crying out to him. Because your spirit is crying, to, crying out to him, asking him for deliverance. And he will set you free. You have to pray, though. That's the problem. A lot of Christians, you guys don't have a prayer life. How are you not going to pray when Jesus, the Messiah, used to pray all the time? I just don't get it. I just can't. I just don't get somebody calling himself a Christian and not praying. And not praying. And the thing is, a lot of Christians, they're not praying to change. They're not praying for God to pray, you know, they praying for things that doesn't have eternal value. Oh, I need a house, I need a job, I need a car, I need to make more money. That's cool, but that's not what you should be praying for. You should be praying for things like this, Lord, I, I have a temporary issue, Lord, I, I, need to be, I need to humble myself, Lord, I need to stop looking at pornography, Lord, I need to stop lying, Lord, please make me be more like you. You guys are not praying like that. Most Christians, a lot of those people who, who claim to be Christian, you guys are not praying that type, that type of prayer. Lord, give me a humble spirit. Lord, uh, um, give me strength. Give me perseverance. Um, let, me, let me be able to not lie, not look at people in a lustful way, not look at things that's not listening to circular music, not listening to people curse. You know, Lord, help me have a holy, pure uh, spirit, let me change me, Lord. You guys are not allowed, Christians. You guys are not praying for things like that. It's all about how much money you want to make. How, it, it, you're praying for things that doesn't have any eternal value. So therefore, you're not blessed. Okay? If you are serious about God, God knows who's serious about Him. 
you are just deceiving yourself. You call yourself a Christian all day long. You are deceiving yourself because even people who are not true Christian, they know a true Christian when they see one, right? They know that, ah, this person's behavior. Like the world, the world is very hypocritical. The world knows that they need to change. When you call yourself a Christian, the first thing they're going to do, they're going to start judging you. They're going to be, well, your Christian shouldn't talk like that. Christian shouldn't dress like that. The world knows the truth. They just don't want to live the truth, right? I had people say, well, you're a Christian. You shouldn't talk like that. That's right. They're right. A Christian is not supposed to talk a certain way. A Christian is not supposed to act a certain way because they know the character of Christ. So you are deceiving yourself. And God loves you. The Lord Jesus loves you. You know, he He will discipline you. The Bible make it very clear that God will discipline you. But He loves you. He don't want to. Um, he wants. He just wants you to guys to change. I mean, you gotta understand, guys. He's all powerful. Like if He wants to send everybody to hell, I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. There's nothing none of us. There's no. There's nobody on this earth can stop God from doing what he wants to do. If he want to just destroy this earth and send all 8 billion people in this world to hell, then who's going to stop him from doing that? That's what I'm saying. So he's too powerful to sin against him. Like, I, I get it. We all struggle. I used to struggle with pornography. I used to have pornography. But, but I've been set free from that. But I still got to... Be careful not to fall into that sin, right? So the Bible says, fight for your salvation with fear and trembling. So I got to be careful not to be, not to let the enemy tempt me to look at this thing. Because I know pornography is destructive. Okay? So avoid situation, avoid people that will make you get tempted. Okay? When you fall into sin, repent and repent to the Lord and say, Lord, strengthen me. The thing about God, the Bible said, heavens rejoice over one sinner that repents. That's a powerful verse. Heavens rejoice, heavens rejoice. What does that mean? The saints that die before you, that's in heaven right now, that live for the Lord, the angels, the holy angels, the Lord Jesus himself, the God, every, the, the elders, the creatures in heaven, they rejoice over you who, who, um, who repent. They rejoice because they don't want to see you go to hell. That's an amazing verse. I'm going to put that verse in the, in the video, <clears throat> in the um, section, in the uh, comment section. So I'll put that verse so you guys can read that verse. You know, they rejoice over one sinner that repents. It, 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 it just, it's just amazing. Because the angels don't want to see us in hell. Repentance, that's, it, you know, it is. Without holiness, no one sees God. So take accountability when you fall into sin. Whatever your weakness is, if it's pornography, if it's sexual morality, if it's lying, hate, you know, just deceitfulness, all unfilled, all sin that you have that you're struggling with, when you fall into any kind of sin, let's say you have hate in your heart, let's say you're a prayer to this person, you don't like somebody because of the color, the nationality, whatever it is, right? And you see yourself, you discriminate against that person. What you have to do is, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, Unfortunately, most people are not saved, so you just won't care. But if you have the Holy Spirit in you, you should be convicted and, and say, Lord, I want to change. I cannot, I'm not supposed to judge somebody, you know, by the color of their skin or by uh, their nationality, Lord, or their status in life. I'm, I'm sorry, Lord, let me, help me change. Now, if you have that kind of spirit, then God would be more than like, more than willing to change it. But unfortunately, most people are not like that. They don't have that spirit. They're not born again. They reject. They reject Christ. Or if you look at, if you eat too much, if you, anything that you do, that's hurting your soul, 
right? If you're lying, that's hurting your soul. If you cheat, if you, you know, like to curse, if you like to have sex with people you're not married to, you like to look at pornography, you like to, all those things that's destroying your soul. If you just come to Christ and repent and say, Lord, I just, I cannot fight this battle on my own. You know, when you, like you guys don't know what's going on in the spiritual realm. When you speak like that, the whole, the Bible, the Bible literally, the Bible said the whole heavens rejoice. That's what God wants to hear. God knows that we are weak, we are weak, we are in a fallen state. We are in a fallen state because of Adam and his wife, Eve. They brought sin into this world in death. But Jesus came and gave us life. The Lord gave us life. Do you guys want life or do you guys want death? If you want death, just keep following your sinful, um, just, just do whatever, um, that whatever makes you quote unquote happy or whatever is good for your flesh. Just live by your flesh, live by your lust. That's gonna, that's gonna um, bring you death. You know, it whips, uh, when you feed the flesh, it whips corruption. You know, but if you guys want life, you gotta feed the spirit. Look, this, this applies to me, this applies to everyone, this applies to all of us, like we are in a war. We are in a war. We have to stay in prayer. We have to stay closer to the Christ. He's our only hope. Father Jesus, there is no hope. Without Christ, we might as well, if, we didn't, if Christ didn't die for us on the cross and shed his precious blood, I mean, we all of us will end up in hell. We are nothing without Christ. You know, he's, we have to lean on him for everything. He's the only one that can, that can save us. He's our savior, he's our Messiah, he's our everything. We need Christ, we need to draw closer to him. You know, we have to read the, meditate on the word. Pray, pray, you know. I used to pray, I pray a lot about having a, a humble spirit. Because I know God, the Bible says God resists the proud and give grace to the humble. Because I know the Lord cannot use me if I have a, a prideful spirit. God cannot use that. So I pray a lot about having a, a humble spirit, about, about having a, a forgiving spirit, forgiving people. Again, God cannot use me if I have unforgiveness in my heart. God have a plan for your life, but he cannot use you if you're holding on to sin. God cannot use somebody that have unforgiveness in their heart. God cannot use somebody that's that's addicted to pornography. God cannot use somebody that's um, that's prideful. But He wants them to repent, right? So for so God will take you with all your sin, whatever sin that you have. Come to Jesus with all your sin, but He doesn't want you to stay that way, right? He doesn't want you to stay arrogant, prideful, a liar, a thief, a sexual moral person, a racist, a bigot. He don't want, he doesn't want you to stay that way because he know it's gonna destroy you. You know? If you have hate in your heart, you cannot enter heaven. You know, if you're addicted, to, if you engage in any kind of sexual immorality, you're going to go to hell. I just read the Bible. I just read the verse to you guys, what God did in, in 1 Corinthians. 23,000 Israelites dead because of sexual immorality. We are in a war against an enemy that wants to send us to hell. We have to take accountability of our action. I have to check my heart daily and ask the Lord, you know, not to, you know, to protect my heart, to give me the spirit of forgiveness, to, to not let bitterness or envy or unforgiveness take root in my heart, in my spirit, because I know those things will destroy me. 
not only they will destroy me spiritually, they will also destroy you physically because a lot of doctors and, 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 and psychologists will tell you that having hate in your heart can, can, will, will, is stressful, it can lead to heart attack, it can lead to an early death, having any type of hate in your heart. Pornography will wire your brain. It turns your brain into like a juvenile state. It will wire your brain in a negative way. That's the reason why God told us not to do certain things because He knows he, those things will destroy us physically, in, well, spiritually first, then physically. Sin can lead to untimely death, to disease. Okay? There are times people die prematurely it's because of sin. People dying of cancer, all kind, all kind of disease. I'm not saying those diseases are because of sin, you know, all the time. But yes, yeah, sometimes it's because of sin. Not all the time, but sometimes it's because of sin. We die prematurely. We die at an early age. God, God wants us to live. He wants us to thrive. He wants to bless us spiritually. He wants to draw closer to us. He doesn't want us to rebel like the like the fallen angels, like the demonic spirit. They are living in rebellion. If we keep disobeying God, we so when we disobey God, we are following the devil. And he's rebelling him and the fallen angels, we are following them. So if we died in our sins, then we go then then they take us and we go spend eternity with them in torment and torture. Because we become God's enemy. The devil and his demons are God's enemy. So we become his enemy when we follow Satan and not follow God not follow Christ. Guys, I thank you for, um, like I said, you know, to avoid situation, avoid temptation, stay away from people in situation that that make you tempt, uh, that make you, that that will make you tempt to sin. Like if you're into pornography, get put an app on your phone that's on black porn sites. Uh, if you're into um, whatever things that you're into, you gotta pray. You gotta spend a lot of time in prayer. I thank you guys for watching this video. May this sermon bless you. May you guys bless by this sermon and and turn away from your sins and know that we have the Bible says we have an advocate, which is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our, our Lord and Savior Christ that's gonna help us. That's gonna help us fight the good fight. But we must fight for our salvation with fear and trembling. Why would you guys want to spend eternity with Satan and his demons? They hate us for passion. You know, if 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 the devil had it his way, he would kill every human being that's alive. But but God is holding him back from doing that. He cannot do it because he's not all powerful. God is the only one that's all powerful. If God remove his presence from this earth, the devil will kill every last one of us. That's the reason why when somebody go to hell, God knows what's going on in hell. He just removes his attributes. Because of that, Satan is just torturing and killing, and torturing and burning people and just, just, just all kind of tortures happening in hell right now because God's presence is not there. God is everywhere. He knows what's going on down there, but he just removed his attributes. He he knows he, he he knows everything. Everybody that's in hell, everybody that's in heaven. God's everywhere. His presence is in heaven and hell and everywhere. But in hell, he just removed his attributes. His love and his mercy, his grace, his compassion. Uh, all the things that you know comes with God. All those things are in heaven, you know, love, peace, happiness, everything's perfect in heaven. And hell, he's he knows what's going on in hell, but he just we just let the devil and his demons just torture people. Because people refuse to submit and, and turn away from their sins. 
hell is forever. Just like heaven is forever. Choose wisely who you, who you will serve because this life can be hard at times. There's no, there's no doubt about that. And I know, you know, I've been through a lot myself, but I know that one thing I do know is that this life doesn't last very long. I just turned, I'm 44 years old. If the Lord blessed me, he gave me 30 years, I'll be 74, but 30 years, that's not a lot of time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, that's the best case scenario, you know? I don't know how long, how much time I got left. But can you imagine those who died in the sins? They are, they're gonna be, those who die who reject Christ, they're gonna be in hell forever. For five billion trillion years, whatever, forever. See, the thing is, it's hard to say five trillion years because forever means just that, there is no time. I hope this message bless you guys. I hope you guys take take your faith in Christ Jesus uh, in our Lord Jesus Christ seriously. I hope you guys turn away from your sins and not play around with sins because you don't know when you're gonna die. You could go to sleep tonight and not wake up, and that's it. Once you take your last breath, you are a judge. Doesn't matter the Pope, the priest, whoever it is praying for you. It doesn't do not believe the devil's lie. Once you take your last breath, do not believe the devil's lie. You take your last breath, you're done. Now is the time of salvation. If you didn't repent while you was alive, after you die, it doesn't matter how many mass and all that stuff they do for you. That's a lie. Do not believe the devil's lie. You are in hell. There is no purgatory. There is heaven or hell. Those who died in Christ are in his perfect peace. Those who died in their sins are in hell right now. And they're going to be down there forever. I hope you guys know it's not one of those people that end up down there. Thank you for watching. May the Lord bless you. And may you spend more time in prayer. And, and pray for me. Please pray for me. I need prayer. You know, that the Lord will strengthen me when I'm going through tough time, when I'm going through trials and tribulation. That the Lord will, you know, just give me the strength to endure suffering, to be a good soldier, to, to stay close to Him. Because there's a lot of dark days ahead. I need your prayer, saints. Please pray for me. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. May the Lord bless you.